In the late 60s, the decision was made to let most of the wildlife populations in Yellowstone go under what's called natural regulation. In other words, we took a hands-off attitude and uh, left them to fend for themselves. During the rut, during the breeding season, when they're wallowing, they generally are urinating in the wallow before they roll in it, so they get that urine on their sides. And the pheromones from there give the cows a good clue as to whether or not this is mating material. But it also tells the other bulls what kind of shape the bull's in. But if all else fails, the tail keeps going up till it's straight up. And when it's straight up, it's time for the other bull to either put up or shut up. Because they've been rumbling at one another this whole time. They, they vocalize continually during the rut. You can hear the bison when you're a mile away from them. And it's just this low, low guttural rumble. So the, the, uh, the bull bison, when they're fighting one another, it's during the rut, during the breeding season, and they're establishing dominance. So who gets to breed which cow? So they run at each other and butt heads, but the movement is, is horizontal at that point. They're not pushing so much back and forth as trying to slip past one another and then turn and hook into the, into the side of the animal. To have it recognized as the national mammal recognizes that, that our mythical landscape is the west, where, where the land is the floor of the sky. The land stays wilderness as long as the bison stays on it. I think the public's pretty mystified by it. I mean, mystified in a positive way. They, not that they don't understand it, but that they're just, the idea of getting 3,500 animals together to make another generation is, is pretty amazing. And I mean, you, you hit here this time of the year, you look down this, this old lake bed left over from the tail end of the last ice age. And you come through the narrows down there and look the length of this, and you can see more bison than there were on the planet a hundred years ago. You know, in one little valley. That's scary. And if you can get people to recognize that simple fact, then what they see here is really a powerful lesson. You know, there's, there is hope for the bison.